Well, good morning, students and families. Here we go again. Another virtual experience with students learning from home, and so you get another video from your principal, Mr. Gardner, who I'm assuming I am your favorite principal if you only choose from those principals that you've had who have the name Mr. Gardner. Um, and so here I am, your favorite principal who's named Mr. Gardner, coming to you again virtually. I'm going to do my impression of Rudolph here in just a second. You ready for it? There it is. Oh, my nose is glowing right there. My nose is glowing. So I have uh, a lot of morning light coming in my office window, and I am coming to you today from my office. And I'm trying to lean back a little bit so I don't totally blow out the screen. But um, it is a beautiful morning. We've been getting very lucky weather-wise the last couple of days. Even if in this area we've not been very lucky the last couple of days in terms of the COVID world. So before we get into COVID, here are some birthdays that I, I, I'm going to try to mention while we're gone. They're on the daily announcements, but I want to make sure people get their credit. So reach out to these students if you could take the time to tell them happy birthday. Here are the birthdays we've missed so far since going to virtual instruction. Nicholas B., Sam F., and Charlie. If uh, you have the time to message any of them and tell them happy birthday, please make sure that you do so. Here are the birthdays that we're going to have between now and this time next week on the 13th. So, uh, Cora, Philip, Odyssey, Mariana, Shirley, and Amy are all having birthdays. So when you see them, please wish them a happy birthday. Uh, I'd prefer you just to text them or, or to message them because most of you shouldn't really be seeing each other. Um, part of the reason that we go virtual at school is in hopes that the culture of being careful follows you home. Um, and so us being careful makes you think, wow, maybe I should be more careful at home too. And the reason that we're doing that is because uh, COVID stings and it's still here all of these many months later. Um, we in Indiana are at almost 200,000 cases. Jefferson County is at 514 cases, but our positivity rate is just uh, here in Jefferson County. And the way Indiana does it is every county is given a color, uh, blue, yellow, orange, red. Obviously, you want to be closer to blue than to red. And so um, we are currently at orange. So that's kind of the level three of four if we wanted to be low. So. Orange kind of sets the guidelines for how careful businesses and schools are supposed to be in a local community. So we're being extra careful. Here at, at Shaw Memorial Junior Senior High School, um, we are currently on this day, November 6th, uh, 2020, um, we are currently at eight positive cases that we've had within our school community. And so that's, um, you know, it's a hard percent to figure out because it's not all students all the time, but it looks like our positivity rate here at Shaw is about three percentage points below the positivity rate of Jefferson County. And that's now. I'm sure that we'll have a few more cases. Um, and as you've seen from the last couple of days before we went to virtual, uh, one case can kind of um, very quickly send a whole lot of students home. So I've run various students and, and I've done a lot of contact tracing. And there are some students that are so active and in so many different things that if they were to get positive, I would send almost 75, 80 people home off of one student. So sometimes we send all these people home and, and it makes families nervous, uh, but it's actually, I mean, the whole point is that we're, we're being extra careful and one case can equal 50 plus kids. So, you know, the news will say, hey, Shaw sent 50 kids home. Well, that may be for one case. I'd prefer we not have any cases, but it's not unreasonable that we do have a few. And with us being three percentage points below the positivity rate currently, I feel like it's not unreasonable, the numbers that we've had thus far. So, with that in mind, um, let's do a joke, because that's the tradition. And I think this one is particularly bad. And some of you won't get it. You'll have to look up the word orthopedic. But here we go. What did the man say when he first put on his new orthopedic shoes? I stand corrected. <laughs> uh, look it up if you're, if you're not sure what, what that means. What did the man say when he put on his new orthopedic shoes? I stand corrected. Um, so, 
With that in mind, let's talk about those of you who had to be sent home for quarantining. Uh, many of you are still on a list of people who we've asked to quarantine. I'll remind you that we're asking that on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of the Jefferson County Health Department. And so when we're asking you to quarantine from society, it's not just school events, it's from society. You're supposed to be home. Uh, you're supposed to not be going outside, not be going through the drive throughs not be going to Walmart. You're supposed to kind of do your best to avoid your family members as is developmentally appropriate. Um, even having to occasionally wear masks if you're going to come within the same room or within six feet of them. Uh, and really, that whole inside the house thing, that's uh, beyond me to put my thumb on because that's a decision for parents to make for their students. But that is the vision of the health department for what these things will be like. Quarantining students aren't in isolation at home, but they are supposed to be generally careful around their loved ones. And so um, in the past, we have asked people who've been positive or who have been put into close contact to get a test to return. Uh, there's been some confusion about there. There's really two groups of people. I'll split us down the middle. There are people who have symptoms, whether they're close contacts, positive or not, and there are people who don't have symptoms. So instead of thinking of this as do they have it, do they not have it, for the sake of understanding what to do with tests and how we handle siblings moving forward, which isn't exactly how we've done it in the past, we've been a little pickier than the health department and we're trying to be aligned with the health department as much as possible. So if you have any symptoms, we want you to get tested before returning to school. Um, if someone in your family has any symptoms, we want them to get tested before you return to school. If anyone in your family has any symptoms of COVID at all, even if you're like, I'm pretty sure it's not it, um, we want you to either get an alternate diagnosis or get a negative test before returning to school. If anyone in your family has symptoms at all, we want you to stay home from school until you've gotten that alternate diagnosis and uh, until you've gotten a negative test, one of those two. If we have a kid at school who's starting to get sick, we're going to, because they have symptoms, send their siblings home. Now, some of you close contacts have no siblings. Uh, some of you close contacts also have no symptoms, which is what I meant to say the first time. If you're a close contact and you have no symptoms, all you have to do to return to school is wait out your 14 days. Um, if you get symptoms during that time, the health department asks that you get yourself tested. But if you don't have any symptoms and you go 14 days without symptoms, that's all you need to do. You can come back to school after those 14 days. From this point on, moving forward, we are not going to identify siblings of close contacts. Um, that is not in the process for the Indiana State Health Department. It's not in the process for Jefferson County. It's something that we were doing kind of um, to make sure that we were being overly cautious. I still feel like we're being overly cautious. We still have some things we're doing beyond the health department, but um, we are finding that uh, according to all of my meetings with them, it just doesn't help that much. As long as families at home are being careful and trying to make sure that their kids aren't intermingling too much and are really watching those symptoms, sending siblings home versus letting siblings come to school of close contacts who have no symptoms, doesn't seem to impact the spread at all is what we're kind of seeing. So we're going to go with that until the health department tells us to do otherwise. I am approaching nine minutes. I need to speed this thing up. This is uh, my one take video and I've told you before my one take videos happen not because I'm amazing and I want to be able to do things in one take but because I don't have the ability to edit video <laughs> and I don't want to have to learn that skill yet. Uh, I would rather focus on working on the curriculum and the processes here at school instead of me myself learning video, video editing. So keep virtually learning. This year's model of virtual here at Shaw and at Pope John is very, very different. And I uh, kudos to all you Pope John families and Shaw families, but I'm going to say especially to Pope John families because I feel sorry for you. You are doing this virtual thing. The teachers over there, just like the teachers here at Shaw, are doing an amazing job. The students are doing an amazing job. So why do I feel more sorry for the Pope John kids? Because you don't have a single case of COVID at Pope John. Uh, Pope John is, is doing this to be in unison uh, with Shaw and as an opportunity 
to see and test the waters and see how well that this is going to go. And so far, reports are coming in that it is going extremely well. A lot of people more pleased than we were in the spring. Um, the teachers are working incredibly hard. Parents and students, if you have time to send them a thank you, if you are appreciating what you're seeing, please do so. They really have put a lot of time and energy into what is coming home to the students. Um, no one else, no other school that we're aware of yet, is planning on doing this almost full broadcast system where we're broadcasting live to our home so that our students can follow along. It's extremely different. And so far, it is extremely more successful. But students, um, it is only going to be as successful as your attendance is. So that's going to be a direct ratio. How successful are we? Well, how good were you at your attendance? And so make sure that you are focused on showing up for all of your classes, that you're listening. Minimize your distractions. Put the phones away from you. Uh, I know that that seems like like a heresy to you. Oh my gosh, how could I possibly put my phone away from me? It's possible. You can manage it for 45 minutes at a time. Um, keep your phones away from you. Focus on what the teacher is saying. Try again not to look at this as a checkoff sheet of, okay, I did it. I did first period. I did second period. Look at this as an opportunity to continue to learn, to improve yourself, to better yourself, and to prepare yourself to God into the world and to do God's will in the world through the skills that you've learned. Um, that's our mission, is to prepare you to be able to help God's mission. And so do your best to do that. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you could make sure you look at this as a learning experience and not as just a checkoff sheet. Finally, parents, with the health stuff, if you're getting any health information, if anyone's getting sick at home symptoms, still go ahead and call our offices and let us know those things so that we can keep track of the things that we need to keep track of so that we can continue to monitor our student body's health overall so that we can make informed decisions about our future. It really is the leadership's intent to not have to go virtual very often. Uh, we want to use it as a response to a lot of students having to go home and then come back and not miss a beat in that thing. And that's our goal this time. It seems like it's working so far. Uh, I very much look forward to being back on November 17th, but I am very happy with what I'm hearing as I walk the halls here with the teachers teaching and as I'm looking in over their shoulder at the students learning. I'm very satisfied as long as you students continue to show up to class. Right now we're at above a 95% attendance rate. That's better than we often get live and in person. And so keep up the good work. Uh, students, thank you so much for all of your patience with it, for your understanding. Families, thank you for the support that you're providing your students at home. Uh, and thank you for choosing us as a partner here at Shaw and Pope John, as a partner in your student and your child's education. We're very proud of what we do. I am extremely proud of the teachers and students right now in this virtual world and how we're stepping up. We are doing something that no one else locally is trying to offer on the scale that we're offering it. And so far, it has been an immense success. Thanks for everything. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call. I will see you. Uh, I'll put out a video next week, and I'll see you on the 17th.